Robert, maybe you can remember, who was the person who said that the, the critic has to deal with both the minute hand of you know, history and the hour hand as well? Was it Tynan or? Yeah, but I think it may have been Tynan quoting somebody else. Somebody else. else. <laughs> but anyway, Tynan is very quotable. But we have the minute hand, which is the show that opened that night. And you comment on it. And why, how, where does this commentary come from, people want to know. To me, the path is into, into as I, I'll be visceral here, it goes into the gut and up to the head. What did I feel about this show? Did it make me laugh, cry, get excited? Was I bored? Was I angry? Was, did something happen inside of me when I saw it? Now, my job is not just to say that. My not, you know, it's just, I don't believe in the thumbs up, thumbs down. Oh yeah, that's good. You know, boy, I loved it. No, you've got to say why. That's where it has to go from the gut up to the brain. And you have to often think pretty quickly. Okay, this was engaging, why? This was not engaging, why? This could have been better, I think, why? This did this, why, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, what I believe is that people should read critics consistently, and I like to think that they do, so that they know where they're coming from. I mean, I have gotten emails from people who say, quite seriously, I now assiduously avoid everything you recommend and I have a good time at the theater, you know? <laughs> or other people who say that they, you know, stick by what I say religiously and I've never let them down. And, and then once in a while when you let them down, you get this hurt email, like, I always believe in you, and you recommended this, and it was terrible. <laughs> and you feel like, God, I'm really sorry. Can I give you your money back? You know, it's, it feels like that. But I do feel I'm there to communicate. Uh, I am not there, and this is a touchy point, but I might as well come out and clear it here. I am not there for the people in the art primarily. I am not there to encourage or nurture or, you know, be nice to. Uh, as somebody once said, and it was, an, it was a director who I had panned ruthlessly at a couple of shows, and someone said, don't you hate his guts? And the director said, no, because I'm in the professional theater. I'm not in the Special Olympics. Uh, you know, and I do find if you are kind all the time or nurture all the time, it gets to be the opposite of the little boy who cried wolf. Eventually, people stop listening. Uh, I think if you say something is fantastic, and wonderful, and people ought to go see it, especially if it's not the kind of thing they might have gone to see, that's your job. And I have to be honest, that's the exciting part of the job. People who think you live for the lousy show that you pan are crazy. Nothing makes you feel better than to discover a new work that's riveting and you didn't think was going to be riveting and you walk into the theater and it's brilliant and you can't wait to run down to the paper and write at the top of your voice, go see this, you've got to go see this. And then I go to bed really happy because I think tomorrow morning I'm going to wake up and first of all there'll be a nice review in the paper, the people who are involved will be happy. The, the people of Toronto will open it and say, hey, there's a great show in my city, I ought to go see that. That's what I live for. The downside of it is that if they're not good, you have to say that, and you have to say it clearly. Uh, and this is a Tynan quote, because I use it frequently. The theater critic's job is to destroy the bad to make way for the good. And some people don't like the first part of that equation, but I believe in it. Uh, because if everything, what did Gilbert and Sullivan say? If everybody's somebody, then no one's anybody? Well, the same thing with theater criticism. But my job with Lynn, I think where Lynn and I agree totally, and I think probably Robert agrees here, what we live for is to tell you about a great show and to make you want to go to it. That's the, the best part of this job. I can be a bit more egotistical than that, actually. Um, people often, I think almost the first question anybody ever asks is the one that you actually asked, Jesse, which is how many plays a week do you have to see? Uh, and they usually say it in a rather pitying tone, or oh, it depends whether, if they're working in the theatre, they certainly say it in a pitying tone, because by and large, the last thing most people working in the theatre want to do is to go to the theatre. And they can't understand anybody who actually has to go up to four times a week, which was my average in London, by the way, which when the job seemed to have a rather more regular shape than it does here. And I was writing a very different kind of column, but maybe that's something I, I can come back to. Um, but they always concentrate on the business of going to the theatre and not on what actually constitutes the work, which is writing about it afterwards, which is both the challenge and the despair and the joy. And uh, after all, it, 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 it's my work in the end that I have to live with rather than the other people's work that I've seen the previous night. Uh, so uh, I like theatre that I can write well about. No, that's, that, that, no that's, that, that's not quite fair. I mean, I could write well sometimes not very often, about theatre that I don't like. Uh, so I, I'm, going to, I'm going to agree with Richard. I would much rather write 
in praise of something than in, in than. Uh, I'm not even sure it is one's job to destroy, but never mind that. I'd rather write in praise of something than dis than in dispraise of something, basically because I think that's how I write best. Uh, not not because I'm a nice person. Um, I don't think that was always the case. I think the older you get, um, the more you're likely to find yourself writing appreciatively at your best. I think we all have a few really bad reviews stored up inside us, real firework displays of vitriol, and for some reason they get harder to do as you get older. I think it was much funnier ones. Anyway, <laughs> the, um, but a lot of the satisfaction of the job really is in doing it, or perhaps even more in actually when you've done it, and and you see it on the paper. Sometimes it's also in, in, in appallingly frustrating. I mean, I spend a lot more time tearing my hair out, what's left of it, when I see what um, I've actually committed to print the next morning, or even things I've missed. You know, I, th I could have said that so much better. Why didn't I think of it at the time? So there is a fair amount of ego um, wrapped up in this job, and I think it's something that we, we, we tend to slide over, rather. Basically, we, we're, we're producing something of our own, as well as commenting on what somebody else has done, which is fair enough, because when you think about it, most plays are comments of what somebody else has done, um, literally, if they happen to be historical plays, or they're reflections of uh, the playwright's idea of the state of the world, or the state of human relations, or something. Every play is parasitic on something, and criticism is parasitic on those plays that are parasites in their own right, and there's nothing to be ashamed of in that, and it's totally inevitable. I'm going to say, take issue with one thing Lynn said, uh, but I'm, I, I think it's just a quibble over a point of words. I mean, I don't think actually one does say something is boring. You could say it bored me, but you, could, but you, but, but you can't say, uh, you, you can't say objectively that it's boring because it, it's, it's entirely due, down to your own reaction to it. But um, once you've said it bored me, you do, have, you do have to explain why. Maybe it's harder that way because um, Maybe that's why it's harder to write about bad plays. Something is something has bored you. Your mind may switch off, and you may go to sleep, and it's therefore a little a, a little bit harder to uh, to explain why. Uh, but I, yeah, I I think I think the job is to recreate the experience, pleasant or unpleasant, as vividly as possible. Uh, it may actually be the critic's main job, certainly the print journalist's main job, is to write well, whatever, you know, whatever whatever that may imply in in, in different cases. I'm fascinated, but by the way, I'm, I'm rather envious of the fact, because I used to do a lot of radio criticism, of the fact that you actually get to give your own questions. Because I always felt that reviewing plays on radio, they became conversations, and they could quite easily go off at tangents, and you could end up realizing you hadn't made the central point about the play. Mm -hmm. So I'm very glad you can, t you, 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 you can take your host by the scruff of the neck and, and make sure that he does. But that's always what, what CBC has done. And occasionally, Matt will go off on a tangent and ask me another question. Can you hear? And that's well, that's wonderful. He will he will make me prove my point, and I love that. I think that's terrific. Yeah. Now I think we're on a bit of the, an interesting point here, and I think some of the the a lot of the discussion around critics comes around these certain points. I mean, um, you know, I think everyone on the stage is critics tend to be passionate supporters of what they critique. Mm -hmm. um, that you know they love it, and clearly you guys have loved theater for most of your lives. And Richard, you said you're there more for the audience than for the people on stage. But of course, the people on stage have a lot invested in what you are then going to review. So I guess I'm just wondering, you know, is there a balance that you have to strike between supporting theater in, for its existence, but at the same, and then balancing your role as a critic of it as well? Well, it's kind of what I said, I have to, <clears throat> to repeat myself a bit, is that, you know, I think if you're, who we want to get to with our reviews in the daily paper are not the people who go to the theater all the time. You know, when I write a review about a can stage production, it's really not for the can stage subscriber who has their ticket already, unless they're debating whether or not they're going to give it to their friend at the office instead of going. What you want is to get somebody who might have been interested in the show to come or who might have been thinking about the play to go, ooh, I thought that might have been good, but Uzunia didn't make it sound quite so hot. Uh, so you're, you're really writing from an audience point of view. If you are, are too, as I said, too quote, gracious all the time, uh, it doesn't do any good. And eventually people can read through this. Uh, I think also if you're a skilled reader of reviews, 
and we, I think we can all be guilty of doing this now again, the punch gets pulled. Mm 